The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at www.dallasgenealogy.org. All right. Good morning. I think it is 11 o'clock and maybe a few minutes past, and I think it's time to get started. So welcome. I'm Tony Hansen. I am the president of the Dallas Genealogical Society, and I welcome you all to our October meeting. I just want to mention, for those of you that don't know, if you have a parking ticket from the garage downstairs, you can take it to the, the desk in the lobby there, and they will validate it for you and let you out for a dollar and a half. So don't pay more than you need to for that. Gloria just confirmed we have a quorum. I believe we have 39 members here and one visitor. One visitor want to be brave and identify themselves so we can at least point out who you are. I don't blame you for that, Tim. Okay, but talk around. I know there's one here somewhere, so be nice to him or her. Oh, don't point her. Point is not nice. Welcome. We're delighted to have you here. Uh, the previous meeting minutes have been distributed via e-news. Um, they're in my backpack and not posted on the doors. They should be. I apologize for that. Uh, they are available on the website, and I want to point out a couple of things that we're trying to do on the website. If you go to our webpage and select events, general meeting, and then meeting minutes, uh, you'll find several things there. What we're trying to do for every meeting from now on is to put the written meeting minutes in a, in a PDF format. And as you can see, we're also, again, trying very hard to record it so that we have a, a video of the meeting as well. And if nothing else, at least we have an audio track going in the back. So one way or another, we're trying to have a, a record of this meeting, and I really hope the video turns out this time like it didn't last time. Sorry, Shirley. But I do want to point out that in spite of that, with the audio track and with the PowerPoint presentation and with the, the delightful audio commentary we had, it still turned out really well. So we do have an audio recording of last month's meeting, which is just fantastic because the content was so good. So we didn't get to see everybody's shining faces, but there's a lot of good stuff. So it is there. It's, it's about an hour's recording. It's really worth hearing if you had missed it last month. It was really a, a tremendous presentation. But again, every month we're going to endeavor to put uh, at least an audio and hopefully a video recording of the general meeting. So if you're not here next month, and I hope you will be, but if you miss it for some reason, you can keep up with the events of the society. Uh, that was just a larger view of that. Susan, would you care to talk to us about our funds this year? Okay, so checking account, we have 36,000. I'll try that again. Checking account, we have $36,376.59. Savings account, we have $121,000. $814.63. Our expenses in the previous month were about $4,300, mostly related to the seminar. The income was about $3,500, mostly from seminar and membership. And that's the past treasurer, and this is the current treasurer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Kristen, would you care to talk to us about the many things that have been and are going to be going on seminar-wise? Absolutely. I'm Kristen Moore, uh, incoming vice president, and I want to extend a huge thank you for the past year to Kathleen Murray. Without her, we wouldn't have had the, the fabulous seminars that we did. Um, we did, as Tony noted, have the fall seminar with Kurt Witcher on Saturday, September 17th. And it was covering sources and methods for family history research. We had about 92 attendees, and 89% rated it very good or excellent. From a financial standpoint, we were right on budget. And in addition to Kathleen, I'd like to thank all the volunteers, because we can't do it without people helping with lunch, with parking, setup, teardown, you name it. So we have some great seminars coming up in 2017. There's a postcard out if you haven't picked it up already. Oh, good. I'm glad you're driving because I don't know what you've got in there. <laughs> in March, on May 18th, we have Tom Jones, who's going to be doing research methods for family historians. And the day before, on Friday, we're having an advanced workshop. It's going to be limited to 30 people, first come, first served. And he's going to talk about planning an exhaustive search with research questions and hypotheses and correlating sources, information, and evidence to solve problems. And then in August, for the summer seminar, we have a wonderful two-day seminar with three speakers, Lisa Louise Cook, who's going to do four sessions, 
and Sonny Morton and Diane Southard, who are going to do two each, and they'll be covering many things, Google, newspapers, DNA, writing a family history, religious records, that sort of thing. Then at the end of September, we'll have Josh Taylor joining us for our fall seminar and talking about different resource goal mines. So save those dates, March 17th, August 4th and 5th, and September 30th. Uh, also last month, it's October 1st, I guess I can say that now, on Friday the 16th, the Dallas Genealogical Society hosted a society summit. We invited officers from 67 different genealogical societies in North and East Texas to attend a workshop on the challenges and opportunities facing our societies today. We had 37 individuals attend from 19 societies. We did a morning roundtable discussion so that we could share each other's issues and come up with ideas and strategies, and many people found that the most valuable part of the day. Um, and after lunch, we had two sessions from Kurt Witcher. The general consensus, it was valuable. 92% of the survey respondents rated it very good or excellent, and 100% 100% would definitely or probably recommend that others attend another summit. And you know, that's a gift that keeps on giving to you. We have the contacts from all of the people who attended, and we are trying to establish some kind of uh, uh, a Facebook group. We have one already established. We're trying to encourage all of those other societies to jump on that. So we have a way to kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Um, in the survey, we also asked them for, uh, you know, would they be interested in, in working together with us and with other societies for putting on even larger uh, presentations like the three that we already have and sharing resources and things. And there was an overwhelming amount of support and enthusiasm for that. So we're going to continue to reach out and work with our, our fellow societies around here and see if we can't help them, help us, help ourselves, you know, promote genealogy and, you know, do some of the great things that maybe all of us together can accomplish that we can't do separately. Some other things that have been going on on the board, uh, we did, as I mentioned last month, uh, update our quorum number. It is based on our membership, which I'm happy to report is increasing. So when we first passed this uh, change to our bylaws, based on the percentage of our membership, our quorum was 20 members. Our membership has increased, and somehow as of September, we've got to have 22 of you here in order for us to transact any official business. So that's a good trend that I'd like to see continue, and I hope that it will. Barbara Ware has agreed to give us one more term. So she initially said that she was going to step aside as our IT administrator, but she's thought twice about it and seen what a great board we have, and she wants to be a part of it again. So she has graciously agreed to give us one more year. So Barbara, thank you very much for that. I'm the one that should be applauding. I'm really grateful to you, Barbara. Uh, we did donate a copy of the, uh, the Remembering Negro Life in Wheelock, Texas book to the eighth floor of the Dallas Public Library. They already had one, which of course is not. Uh, can't be checked out. They wanted to have a second copy. It is now, I believe it is now available in that area where you can go and actually check this book out. You know, it's a great one, but don't check it out and buy it because uh, it's, it's a great cause for that too. Um, as you can see from our sale out there, which is ongoing right now, we are trying to make some room in our storage closet. And looking at there, we have lots and lots and may I say lots of extra copies of our journal. And so we are trying to uh, cut that down just a little bit. So we are offering them at this meeting. We'll be doing it again next month. Extra copies are going to be on sale for a dollar a piece. After next month, we're going to recycle them. So this is going to be your last chance to get these paper copies that we do have available. We are reaching out to repositories and libraries to make sure that anybody that would like to have a set of them is going to have them accessible. So we're holding back a few. We'll try, I think, um, we'll be able to have a couple of complete sets for anybody, any repository that doesn't have them. So we're not just going to wantonly destroy these, but we need the room. We also have some coolers and some uh, coffee pots and some other things there too at very attractive prices, I might add. And so I would encourage you on your way back if you need a cooler or a coffee pot to grab some of those as well. Um, our annual awards event is coming up on us December 10th. And so um, by our bylaws, we need to form a, a committee to uh, nominate some people for the various awards that we have. So Xander Crowley and myself are going to be the board representatives. Uh, Jimmy Walters and Lisa have just agreed to be our two at-large members, but there's always room for more. So if anybody else would be interested in having a say in the recipients of the four awards that we give, by all means, talk to me. Um, even if you don't want to be part of the committee, you can have a say in it. We have a very convenient page on our website. If you just go to 
events, there's an annual awards tab on there, and then down at the bottom, there are links where you can nominate anybody for any of the uh, awards that we are giving. Um, so it's, it's a bit late for the TSGS Volunteer of the Year. The submissions for that's already cut off, but we have the Award of Merit, the Heritage Preservation, the Lord Dewitt Foxtrot, who is here today, very happy to see, a Distinguished Service Award, and the Volunteer, with, uh, Volunteer of the Year Award, and then an opportunity for a special presidential special award for a very special person. Nominate, would love to hear from you for people that you think uh, deserve the recognition for the great things that are going on in the society. And just a reminder, we have the awards dinner on December 10th. It will be up on our newly renovated seventh floor area, the O'Hara Room, as we were struggling to remember this morning, not the Oh My God Room. Uh, it is going to be free for DGS members. There will be a fee for non-members, and we're going to set the price at today's board meeting for that. Todd Diedecker, our webmaster and IT board, or our volunteer coordinator, has agreed that he will uh, arrange for the awards dinner itself and all of that, and I know he would love to have some help with that. So anybody interested in helping actually physically put on the meal, the decorations, and all that stuff, contact Todd. One of the crazy ideas we had this year as a kind of a fundraising thing is that we thought it would be fun to have people create some gift baskets to donate and then raffle off at the event. My sister-in-law is a nun. I've been going out there for years and participating in her events, and I, it's actually kind of a fun deal. They have them out on the side of a table, and the way that it works is you buy tickets. You get you know eight tickets for five bucks, and you just basically you know, have a basket. They're kind of like we did at the seminar, and you put a ticket in, you know, or all tickets if you want, in the basket, and we'll draw for each basket, and the, whoever gets the winning draw will win the basket. So that's a fun thing for you attending the awards dinner. It's also can be a fun thing for those of us that want to kind of give something to society to put some of these baskets together and donate them as a way to help raise funds for the society. So I'm going to try it this year and see how it goes. And if you're interested in putting together a basket, contact Todd or me or my sister-in-law. She'll give you some great ideas. <laughs> we are also again this year kicking off our Bring a Friend contest. And so the way this works is if you bring a non-DGS member to a general meeting, and register them with Gloria when you come in. You're going to get a chance and a drawing to win free admission to one of our seminars coming up in the next year. So it's a great deal to bring people, expose them to the wonderful things that are going on here, and for you to get a chance to attend a seminar for free. There are a few rules. They're plainly printed right there. So <laughs> actually, all right. So the, we do have a few rules. The guest must be somebody who is not a member on the day that you bring them. You've got to register them on the day that you bring them here. You can only claim a guest one time. You can't keep bringing the same person back month after month. Um, you'll have 12 months to redeem the award, so that basically means you're going to have three seminars to choose from. And unfortunately, it is not transferable. You win it, it's stuck with you. And I'm the sole and final arbiter of any disputes. Now, I know you're a contentious crowd, so we come up with a, uh, a form for submitting any kind of disputes. Just print your name on a $20 bill, and I'll be happy. Now, I know you, and I know you don't like to wait. So for those of you that want an expedited process, we also have an expedited <laughs> form as well. Uh, on a more serious note, and a, and a grateful note, as you're aware, we also participated in the North Texas Giving Day this year. This is a, a really cool event for nonprofit organizations to be able to raise funds. So if you're a nonprofit, you basically can just register with them, and then on the 22nd, it's a, a one-day give-a-thon. People can go to the North Texas uh, Giving Day site, and donate money for their favorite nonprofit organization. And so we elected this year to participate for the first time, and it really turned out to be a really good thing for us, and for a lot of people, too. Um, overall, $37 million was raised in one day. Think about that. That's a lot of money, and that's just for the North Texas region. Uh, there were 2,518 nonprofits participating. We were one of them. This year, they raised, as I said, $37 million. You can see they started in 2009 with $4 million, and it's, it's a pretty impressive growth every year. So every year, this is getting to be a little bit bigger and a little bit better and a little bit more exciting. It's really good for nonprofits to participate in because during the year, they have a lot of training. They teach us a lot about social media, how to market, and so it's, you know, there's many, many reasons why it's really beneficial, uh, not to mention the financial part. Uh, because you don't just get the donations. They also have corporations that donate a lot of money that just kind of is in a, what they call a bonus pool. And so at the end of the event, they take that bonus pool and distribute it across all the participating organizations on a percentage basis. And this year, they haven't finalized the numbers, but it looks like the bonus is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7%. And so that means that for all of our donations, we get an extra 7% on top of it just for having been part of this. 
So participating, there's a lot of really good reasons why it's a really good thing for us to do. Um, there were 81,000 individual donors overall. Um, interesting, just because I'm a techie and this is interesting to note, 52% of the people who participated in this year were using mobile devices. So I mean, that's just kind of an indicator of where technology and where people who are using technology are going. It's just something for us to kind of keep in the back of our minds. We had 26 donors, three of whom were anonymous. Um, we had donations ranging from as little as $25 to as much as $500, and we raised a total of $2,600. So we had a goal of $2,500. You recall we were raising this money for the uh, portals uh, to Texas history, and we agreed we would match the first $2,500. So we already met our goal, and we're going to present a check of at least $5,000 to the portal this year, which is just really awesome. Yeah. Thank everybody who donated. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We got donations from as far away as Florida. My sister. Thank you, my sister. Uh, Chicago, uh, one of my classmates from high school, and Florida, uh, California, which I did not recognize the name on. But again, it, it, it emphasizes the value of the social media stuff. And so next year, because we are going to participate in this again, one of the ways you can help is just as we start promoting it and putting our stuff up on all of the social media, if you would just share that with your friends and family and just say, hey, you got 25 bucks, it would really mean something to us if you would, would donate it, and it can help our cause. So we did really good this year. I'm really looking forward to next year. Our indexing effort uh, is 49%. Oh, somebody had a question. Yes. Yes, we, okay. Well, I'm, I'm not sure which, which link you're talking about, which. Uh, it was the one that was on the giving day. Okay, no, it actually wasn't. Um, th that's a different one. We had, well, okay, there was two links. One link would take you either, I had a, a, pay, a donations page on our website, which talks about our mission and some of the other stuff. There was a guide start, or a uh, North, North Texas State giving page, which talked in a little video there. And then there's this one, so I'm not sure which one you went to. But since you pointed this one out, you know, GuideStar is an organization that um, provides information about nonprofits. And so if you are a nonprofit, you're basically going to show up there just by virtue of being a nonprofit because they have access to the, the databases where we are registered. However, if you choose to, you can disclose more information about your organization. And that is why we have a, a gold recognition that we have. Uh, shared with them our budget, we have shared with them our mission, information about our board of directors, and several other things. And so there's, there's actually four levels. There's a platinum, we aren't quite two yet, but we are three levels up. What used to be the highest recognition level that GuideStar gives for a nonprofit organization, which is why we're kind of proud of that and, and share that here. Again, just part of what we believe is the important level of disclosure and transparency in being a nonprofit organization that we are. But thanks for pointing that out. Um, but if you do, I'm not sure if there's a link on here on our website, it is on there. And if you click on the link on the website, it will take you to the GuideStar page. Okay, indexing. As you know, we're working on indexing the probate records on the portals in the uh, Tarth, Texas history, and we're 49% done. We're just about halfway there. Uh, over the past month, and actually for Joe and John, those numbers are one higher because I did this at 7 o'clock last night. I checked this morning, they were busy later than I was. But Joe Connolly did 132 cases last month, Karen Walker did 74, and John Williams did 28. So, so we started this in January. We've made impressive progress, but we could, I'd be happy to see it go quicker if you all want to jump on in. Okay. As if you talk to anybody that does this, it is kind of addicting. It's just really interesting to read some of these records and read about you know, just what was going on in, in, this, in the city of Dallas you know, 50 or 100 years ago. So you can go to our volunteer page. You'll see Dallas County probate things. Just click on the view and sign up and uh, have some fun. Kelvin Myers contacted me. Uh, Kelvin is involved in running the, the TSGS conference here that's going on in October 28th and 30th. And apparently he is in charge of arranging for all of the registration at the front end of the conference. He's looking for some help. So if you are interested in volunteering and helping TSGS put on this event, Kelvin would love to hear from you. Tell him I sent you. Uh, Ari well, um, Wilkins upstairs is also involved in this. You could probably talk to her as well. But, but Kelvin did ask me to, to make mention of the fact that he sure would appreciate some help for that. So if, and if you don't know who Kelvin is, let me know and I'll get you in touch with him. We have several SIGs that are active. 
uh, including our Roots Magic and our Next Generation Site Builder. That's been meeting quarterly. They've already met in September and will be meeting again in December. But we invite you to participate in any of the special interest groups. They're all in their own right very interesting and fascinating and a really good way to meet some people and to expand your genealogy skills and get exposed to stuff that you might not have thought of on your own. So those are the upcoming meetings. They're, of course, are posted on our website and we encourage you to attend any or all of them if you can. Our next meeting is November 5th, and I believe it, Bernard is going to be here. Okay, yeah, Bernard Meisner from the Twin Cities is going to be talking to us about finding your German ancestor. But we don't care about him. Well, we, we do, but we'll care about him next month. Um, I think Todd's going to turn up the feedback after this meeting. So after this meeting, if you want to tell us how we did about today's gentleman meeting, we'd love to hear from you. But really, what we do care about is Glenn Kincaid. And Glenn is here to talk to us on a variety of things, so I'm going to let Shirley come up here and introduce him, and I will hook him up to this Put your microphone. I'm pleased to say that we have with us here today Glenn Kincaid, who is an experienced genealogical researcher, lecturer, author, and instructor. Glenn graduated with a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from Wichita State University. And after serving as an officer in the United States Air Force, he joined IBM in 1960 in Kansas City, Missouri. In 1990, he retired from IBM in Dallas and began pursuing researching his own family. Glenn has taught computer genealogy classes at Southwestern Methodist University, Senior Net of Dallas, and Brookhaven College, where he currently teaches several different genealogy courses. His hobbies include travel, sailing on tall ships, oh. <laughs> um, I love that, uh, act, attending reenactments of Revolutionary War and the War of 1812 battles, photography and genealogy. Glenn and his wife Anne live in Dallas and have been married, have two married sons and six grandchildren. Glenn's presentation is going to focus on how to successfully use record collections to solve genealogical programs. And at the end of Glenn's presentation, he will be taking questions. So if you can, there's a lot of material to cover. Hold your questions, and Glenn will be with you at the end for answers. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your membership dues are supporting this and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, I hope you consider joining. You can become a member for as little as $35 a year, and you can join by going to our website, dallasgenealogy.org, and clicking on the Membership tab.